Hello and welcome to this special show on Rajya Sabha Television, wherein we bring you the technological interventions as far as India's fight against COVID-19 is concerned. And today, in this particular episode, we will talk about an app which is helping the health workers and the people of our country as well to try and ensure that they have the information whether or not they have come in contact with any COVID positive person. Now, the app is known as Arogya Setu app. This was launched by the government of India on 2nd of April. And in almost 10 odd days, more than 3 crore people have downloaded this app on their mobile phones. Now, this particular app has several features, which en enables anybody who has this particular app on the mobile phone to know whether they have uh, come in touch with a COVID positive person. Also, they can uh, do a self-assessment of their health situation and also volunteer for uh, uh, you know any help if required at any particular stage. So let's begin the show and uh, let me first introduce the three guests uh, who are with us on this particular show. We have with us uh, the Director General of National Informatics Center, Ms. Neeta Verma. We are also joined by Professor Rajiv Das Gupta of uh, JNU and we also have with us Mr. Subhimal Bhattacharya, the cyber technology expert. And let's begin the show with uh, the Director General of National Informatics Center, Ms. Neeta Verma. Ms. Verma, uh, let us first try and understand what exactly is uh, this app that is Arogya Setu app. What are the features it has? Uh, and uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the working of this particular app, how does it work? And why is it necessary that all of us should have this Arogya Setu app installed on our mobile phones? Arogya Setu app is designed to help us keep safe, keep informed, and also help us combat spread of COVID-19. It is indeed an essential tool in our fight against COVID-19. App can be downloaded from Google Play Store or Apple Store. It is available in many Indian languages as well as English and Hindi. This app has essentially three components. First is it has a self-assessment component in which it gives opportunity to the user to undergo a self-assessment where a person is supposed to share his health condition, his contact history, as well as his travel history. Basis this, his status is, then, is set from green, amber to red. And he is advised whether he should simply stay, if he's in safe zone, stay at home, follow all those hand hygienes, sanitize, and all other advisories. Or if he has to get into a self-quarantine mode, or he should contact a doctor or visit the hospital. It also provides us the advisories issued from government from time to time in different languages. And these advisories are pushed to you depending on what profession you belong to. Are you a delivery person? Are you a healthcare professional? Or are you a law enforcement agency? Another very important thing, which is very pertinent, which is the topic of your talk today, is the contact tracing. How it mm -hmm. works is that when you download this app, it essentially captures your Bluetooth data as well as GPS data. But okay. all these data in a highly encrypted fashion is kept on your phone only. It is, it is only when you report that you are COVID-19 positive, this data is shared with the government servers. There it is analyzed and found that which all persons you have come in contact with. And then those persons are alerted depending on the, on the algorithm, whether um, uh, what is your risk, uh, depending on your contact duration and the contact time with that person. And then advice to either get into a, go to the hospital or be in self-quarantine mode. But this data is, while it is at the phone, it is kept in encrypted fashion. And when it is stored at that time, only the Bluetooth data is stored. No personal, no names, no contact details, no phone numbers, those things are not shared into it. And mm -hmm. on the server also, it is uses only to alert all those persons who have by mistake come in contact or unknowingly have come in contact with those COVID-19 positive patients. Because see, please understand the challenge with this COVID-19 infection is the person himself for quite a few days be asymptomatic. He may not know that he is, he is the carrier of COVID-19 and spreading the virus. So unknowingly, he might have come in contact with many people. And the, 
and therefore it is this app basically helps solve those people by alerting them that they have come in contact in the last and that too on it picks up data only for the last 14 days which is as per the government uh, guidelines are concerned okay Uh, so, uh, Miss Miss Verma, I'd like to uh, you know jump in here with one specific question. Now that it has been almost uh, uh, more than ten, eleven days since this particular app was launched, and three uh, crore uh, or more than that downloads have happened. So, do we have any data to analyze further that uh, how this particular app is helping in terms of uh, achieving the objectives with which this particular app was made? That is. Uh, informing people that they might have come in touch with the covid positive cases or assessing their health situation as well is there a data for that as of now with us see as you already know 3.6 crore people have already downloaded this app they are they are submitting their self assessment and basis that data is being shared on almost real time basis with these users okay and 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 uh, you you you're pointing about how this is very important in terms of two aspects not only telling people whether they have got, come in contact with the covid positive cases but also the self assessment aspect so how does the self assessment aspect works here see there is already as you must have seen there are set of questions which has been prescribed by ministry of health where it basically asks what is your health condition are you having any comorbidity condition or have you come in contact with somebody who was covid positive or you have any travel history or, or are you having any symptoms as of today cough fever and all those it basically asks in a very simple language in multiple languages this app can be used you basically share your conditions and then it advises you there i here i like to say it is very pertinent and, and responsibility of we citizens that we share our health condition accurately because if okay. we not share our health condition accurately we cannot get the right advice from the app okay let me bring in uh, professor das gupta here as well uh, from uh, uh, the jnu's uh, center for community health sciences professor das gupta if we look at the concept of contact tracing why is it that this aspect is really really crucial in our fight against covid 19 contact tracing is a very basic principle of any communicable disease control uh this assumes particular relevance for respiratory infection because uh it, it's not a water borne infection for example where you can treat or manage the water source or it's not a food borne infection where you can ensure food safety uh, also we don't know who is infective and who isn't and it transmits very easily through cough sneeze or even an aerosol therefore uh, contact tracing is very crucial if one person who is in this case uh, covid-19 positive has come in contact with others be it in the household or in the neighborhood or in a marketplace or in an institution <clears throat> mm-hmm. now uh, classically uh, contact tracing is done through personal interview by actually listing who he or she has come in contact with and reaching out to each of them uh why an app or technology based uh contact tracing helps is because human memory is not infallible uh i may not remember how many people or who who all exactly i met in the last let's say 3 days or 7 days or for that matter if i was traveling in a public transport who all have been in my vicinity obviously i don't even know them so uh, the inter- so the listing which is memory based has limitations and that's where the app comes in uh, as uh, she explained very eloquently mm-hmm. uh, it's also important to understand in which settings this app is likely to work better and uh, that it is not a magical solution it still needs a uh, health worker based or person based interviewing and person based contact tracing it it merely a tool in that sense uh, okay. one of the key challenges this this number of say x crores uh, is is only in the aggregate it all matters how much threshold you have achieved in a population and particularly now that we have a lockdown situation which is which may continue let's say for some conceivable time plus some reasonable restrictions over conceivable time 
uh, the understanding is that it requires a minimum 20% threshold uh, in a defined population or defined geographic area for this to actually give the results uh, that we are talking about or that we are foreseeing. Okay. Uh, the second important thing is, and we can talk about other things later, uh, mm -hmm. is that one would still require human uh, interviewer-based collection of details and you mm -hmm. just can't control whole of this in remote, so to say, which is the model that South Korea followed. But remember, South Korea did it with a whole lot of intrusive uh, mechanisms, including credit card tracing, including facial recognition, and so on. That's a completely different model. Uh, here, I believe uh, what we are trying to do is to find a good, sensible hybrid of the two. OK. And uh... A sort of a bridge between uh, the health workers and the that's common right. people, the citizens. But, but that's it that's means, how it works. Yeah, but it means that the app developers will have to keep closely working with uh, the epidemiologists because all, all apps come with glitches. All apps need mm -hmm. to be constantly improved. And this, this should be no exception. And therefore, this close collaboration is very crucial. Let's now bring in Mr. Subimal Bhattacharji. Uh, Mr. Subimal, what are your views as far as uh, the technological aspect of this particular app is concerned, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the purpose for which this particular app was built? Uh, first and foremost, I would like to really congratulate uh, NIC for bringing out uh, an app like this because many issues uh, uh, which which we have seen in this country in the last few weeks uh, as we are uh, you know encountering this pandemic is that mm -hmm. a lot of people have even been trying to hide their you know situations so i think uh, you know even even if there is a good human intent in many cases but there are also that element that who would want to hide and also this technology is the only way that you can uh, catch uh, everyone and try and ensure that from a public health point of view, you are able to cover the whole spectrum. Now, having said so, you know, Vishal, I would okay. think when you employ technology for such a large uh, collection of information, and mind you, uh, here, there are two aspects uh, of, uh, you know, technology that is being used. One is the Bluetooth technology that, uh, you know, is basically enabling you to uh, find out who all have been in close contact uh, around you. And two, the location, GPS-based location technology, which is actually giving the location uh, of a uh, you know, particular contact. So mm -hmm. while if you see that what uh, Apple and Google are uh, planning to launch that framework, they have only remained on the Bluetooth part. We have gone a step ahead and we have actually looked at both the uh, Bluetooth as well as the locational aspect. Mr. Supimal, let's bring in another aspect here as well. That is data privacy, and that's a very important angle. So what are your uh, uh, thoughts as far as uh, this particular app is concerned and the aspect of data privacy? Yeah, I, I think, you know, she has explained it very well that uh, the data that is there, it is residing in the app in your device. And uh, whatever even goes to the cloud, that also goes in a very encrypted form. But if you, if you look at the larger policy aspect of Vishal around data privacy in the country, uh, mind you, we are just short of the personal data protection bill, which is uh, still in parliament and now going through the select committee. But if you mm -hmm. go back and look at the current scenario, the current scenario, the, the uh, IT Act, uh, under the IT Act, the rules that were notified in April 2011, they very clearly say what is the sensitive personal data. And much of the data that uh, the DG mentioned about, they, uh, you know, they fall in, into the sensitive personal data. Now, a collection mm -hmm. of sensitive personal data and how do you deal with it, that has been defined. And mm -hmm. this whole aspect that is being done is being done by the government of India. So okay. government of India, through its... Uh, you know, authorized agency has developed an app. The collection of the data is remaining with the government. And then the privacy policy that has been very well mentioned in the app 
mm-hmm. that mentions very clearly you know what is the data being used for how mm-hmm. long can it uh, remain there is a 30 day provision that you know if there isn't anything that the data is purged and or it it goes away from your device as well as from the cloud so i think the privacy policy becomes the fundamental point on which you have to devise whatever issues you could have around privacy now at this point of time i don't foresee that any step has been taken that is violative of uh, you know the laws and rules that we have and to the privacy mm-hmm. clauses within the app make it okay. very clear okay let's let's move on to another aspect and let me bring uh, ms vama again here uh, ms vama the prime minister just a few days back uh, pointed out that you know this particular app in uh, in the uh, you know further stages of our fight against covid-19 can also act as an e pass for uh, travel when uh, perhaps uh, he was talking about uh, times when the uh, restrictions will be eased or the lockdown uh, will be brought to uh, a, a, you know a, a lower level then uh, this particular uh, way could could be applied uh, this particular app could be applied for that particular purpose how would that work uh, any any thoughts on that or, or there might be a mechanism which would have been thought about yes before i answer your question let me answer the concerns of my two esteemed co panelist first on on, that- on on data privacy you mean to say and uh, uh, first to professor rajiv das gupta this is this app is developed through one of the very unique public private partnership where a lot of technology professionals in the country startups data scientists government of india as well as epidemiologists are on board to really work out to make that the right kind of advice goes so that's what i just wanted to inform to him Uh, okay. second thing in terms of um, uh, the concerns which were raised on privacy and all uh, two things i wanted to tell first of all all this data which is collected on app continues to remain on your app till you report to be covid-19 positive and on your app also even your even your even your conditions data is kept um, in a highly encrypted fashion so the best of the technology and best of the tech means have been adopted to make sure that we do not really there is no there is no concern of privacy it should come second thing okay. i just and, and and the concept of e pass ah uh, so concept of e pass i am coming to so e pass is supposing mm-hmm. once you what is your current status are you in safe zone are you in amber zone or are you in red zone that that particular condition can be used to issue in pass this is this is a work which is in progress it is not yet uh, completed that way there is the discussions going on on that but what i understand e pass is basically depending on in which first of all in which cluster or area you are living in what are the restrictions or lockdown conditions there and depending on what is your health condition as far as covid 19 is concerned this two took to together some kind of a model can be built through which these passes can be issued for people for facilitating their movement which is also be necessary as we move forward so professor das gupta you know would it be safe to say uh, going by what all uh, all three of you have said so far that uh, you know this particular app acts as a very important bridge between the people and the health workers of the country as far as contact tracing is concerned no it doesn't replace contract tracing contract tracing it aids contract tracing uh the second issue is that a lot will depend on uh on 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 the on on the stage of transmission that we are in uh china's uh, experience with these color coded passes is in a context where it had extremely high transmission uh india perhaps barring uh, the hot spots that are emerging these aspects is likely to have uh, less or limited uh, application but even if uh, even if we require all the features let's say for in a situation like mumbai where where all these uh, aspects would actually come into play a lot of it depends mm-hmm. on how much pe- i mean to what extent people are downloading it uh, and therefore to the extent that to which we are addressing the private uh, privacy security concerns because ultimately at least in india till this point it is voluntary and therefore the issue of trust is extremely crucial uh, if it is mandated by law that's a different scenario but as of now it's voluntary and therefore a very transparent addressing of all these issues will 
uh, lead to better downloads and therefore potentially better application. Mr. Subimal, your concluding comments. No, I think uh, as Mr. Dasgupta has mentioned, because it is voluntary, so you know you still have an option of uh, going or not. But by and large, people have gone and uh, subscribed to it. Secondly, even if you have subscribed and you don't want your location to be known, you can switch off the location aspect. So I think you know by and large, uh, nothing intrusive has uh, been uh, absolutely there in this whole. Uh, app that has come and I would think that uh, it is really a good step uh, considering the gravity of the uh, situation and what we have gone through in the last few weeks. So there it is. All you and me need to know about uh, this particular app that is the Arogya Setu app and the entire concept of uh, contact tracing uh, as far as uh, the fight against COVID-19 is concerned. Thank you so much uh, all three panelists, Ms. Nita Verma, the Director General of NIC, Professor Rajiv Dasgupta and uh, Mr. Subimal Bhattacharji as well for your views on the show. And uh, we'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic. Uh, until then, keep watching Rajasabha Television and also keep yourself safe, uh, stay home and follow all the guidelines given by the government agencies. Thank you. <laughs>